Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for another AP Classroom demonstration webinar. Uh, we will be focusing this webinar on student practice and some of the newest available student supports that have uh, become functions in AP Classroom in order to help students prepare for the 2020 AP exam administration. Uh, my name is Claire Lorenz. Uh, you've probably heard my voice before if you have joined us for any of these webinars in the past, uh, but we will spend the majority of our time today uh, going through the student practice options uh, in AP Classroom. Uh, so I'm going to get right to it, and if you're not there already, we'd ask that you'd do your best to try to follow along with your own class. Uh, go to myap.collegeboard.org on your computer's browser um, and uh, just get ready to log in with us and follow along as we explore some of the new functionality in AP Classroom. I'm going to go there in a minute, uh, but I'm going to do a couple of plugs for uh, some non-AP Classroom information. And that is, uh, if you haven't already gone to our apcoronavirusupdates.collegeboard.org uh, website, this is truly our hub for exploring anything new related to what's happening with AP currently and for the 2020 AP exam administration. Um, I'm actually going to exit out of my slides right now and go there with you so we can just take a quick tour of what you'll be able to see. Uh, so this is apcoronavirusupdates.collegeboard.org. I'm going to make my screen a little bit larger for you to see. And you can see that this hub has been uh, separated into uh, separate tabs depending on what role you fill uh, in your school. Um, the FAQs are here for everyone. Um, I'm not going to go through them all, but if you do click here, you can see that there's a list of questions uh, that are commonly asked, and if you just expand here, you can get um, uh, answers to those questions. Most of you will click on the Educators tab, um, and I do want to point out a couple of things here. Um, if you click on the AP exam schedule, not only will you see the exam schedule uh, for 2020, uh, but you will also be able to scroll down to course-specific information. So if you teach, let's say, AP English Language and Composition, and uh, you've not been able to attend some of the webinars that Trevor Packer the head of AP has been able to hold uh, about your course, you can uh, just expand here and you will get all the information that you need about your course's exam for 2020, including what type of questions might be on the exam, uh, what units are eligible to be assessed, which ones are not, um, and then, of course, the actual date and time of the exam and uh, the makeup date and test. Uh, uh, test data time. Um, so we wanted to point that out to folks to make sure that you knew that uh, that was there. If I go back to the educator site uh, and you keep scrolling, I'm going to also make a plug for our AP Live courses. And uh, these are our live uh, AP uh, classes that are being held on YouTube every day. Uh, we have expert AP teachers who are bringing you content and skills live every day. Those uh, courses are also recorded so students can go back and watch them on demand. We've been live since uh, March 25th. Uh, doing both review lessons and then also supplementary lessons that cover the uh, the last part of the course. Even though it's not being assessed on the exam, uh, we wanted students to get the information so that they could be successful in any sequence courses that they may take in college if they earn a qualifying score on the AP exam and earn that advanced standing. Uh, we wanted them to have that information to be prepared. So you will see both review material and supplementary material. Uh, if you scroll here, you will see the full 
the full uh, list of, of classes and when they stream. If you actually click on a particular course, like let's say um, I'll click on European History, uh, it will take me to that YouTube channel and I can actually see all of the courses that have taken, all of the classes that have taken place so far, um, including some that are upcoming over the next several days or so. Um, and again, even if you didn't watch these lives, students can go back and watch them um, um, on demand at a time that makes most sense to them. Um, if you want to see the full schedule, so um, uh, again, let's say uh, I am an AP psychology teacher and I want to know when a certain topic is being covered, I can actually expand this and you will get a full uh, calendar of events that are happening here. Um, including uh, the name of the actual lesson, uh, in, if, if appropriate, the topics that are being covered, uh, as well as the skills that might be covered that day, and any additional information for psychology, uh, we've included the learning targets for that particular session. Uh, this will scroll, uh, if I keep going, all the way through uh, uh, the end of the, the sessions. Um, so you can feel free to kind of see when uh, this is actually, uh, when certain topics are actually going to be broadcasted. So you can have your students turn in at particular times. We hope that they'll watch all of them, uh, but this information is here for every course should you want to get a better sense of what will be covered when. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to jump into AP Classroom. Uh, this is uh, my uh, username and password, you are going to have to sign in with your own. Uh, if I click Submit, I'm going to be taken to my AP. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. Several of you who have joined us for other webinars, uh, I, I go through this in a little bit more detail uh, on other pages, uh, on other webinars. Uh, so I'm going to actually fast forward through some of this. Um, for this for this kind of walkthrough, I'm going to use AP Biology. I'm going to use, go to AP Classroom. And uh, certain things you will see right away. And, um, and again, I'm going to try to make this a little bit larger so that you all can engage in this a little easier. So the first thing I notice is that our banner has changed. And you can see that our teams have kind of highlighted some of the things that are new here. The so students have access to optional free response questions to practice demonstrating their knowledge and skills before the exam. Look for this green target uh, practice icon to view FRQs, student progress, and optionally provide feedback if you are able. Um, so I do want you to, to note that this green icon will become very, very important. That icon indicates that a question has been released to students, meaning they do not have to wait for you as a teacher to assign it to them. Uh, they will be able to practice with that item on their own and have access to the scoring rubrics for that uh, particular question so that they can compare their response to the actual sample responses and rubrics for that question. Um, I do want to kind of go up to the help menu um, and remind you that there are things like the teacher guide for uh, uh, using AP Classroom. As you can see, our teams have updated this very, very recently. Um, I'm recording this on April 15th. This was updated uh, April 13th. And uh, you can see right here, we've called out student practice questions for the 2020 exam. If you want to see more about that, I just click, and it will take me directly to the part of the document that deals with this, including what students will see. Um, I'm going to try to take a couple of moments to show you that in today's uh, webinar. But I do want to point out to you that there are some screenshots here about what students will see and some of the screens that I will walk you through today. Um, but I do want you to um, uh, 
be able to kind of see exactly what students will see um, and understand uh, all of the screens. So if something is still unclear after our time together today, I would encourage you to please go to this uh, help menu document in order to be able to uh, see uh, what students see and, and review anything that we've touched on today. Um, again, there is also a student guide. Students have access to this as well. This one was also updated very recently. If you click here, again, students will be able to kind of walk through uh, how they can practice answering free response questions and then also how they can begin with uh, using those questions and compare their, uh, their answers to a live rubric. So without further ado, let me go back here. Um, I do want to point out that uh, I chose biology because you can see that there's a mix of things up here. There's a mix of uh, a progress check FRQ that I had released to my students. Uh, if you uh, look at an earlier version of this webinar, you might uh, learn how to release all of those progress checks to students. If you haven't done that already, we would encourage you to do so. You can release all of them at the same time. Uh, you can reassign them to students if you've assigned them already. Um, and uh, there is also some things I haven't assigned here, but you will see that a question is coming up that uh, is labeled as a practice problem. I may not have assigned this. In fact, I know I didn't, uh, but it's coming up on my dashboard because uh, students now have access to this question, and I know that because of this green icon that is next to here. So where do I find these questions that students now have access to? Well, a lot of them came from the question bank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the question bank and we'll look to see what's different. Um, uh, in an earlier version of this, uh, I also talked about uh, another option uh, whereby if I wanted to create a gigantic uh, assignment for my students where I took all of the FRQs and uh, I wanted to say, hey, I want uh, all of the FRQs um, minus the ones that are from Unit 7 and then also minus the ones that are from Unit 8 because those units are not assessed on uh, the uh, AP Biology exam. Uh, I can use that nomenclature and uh, you can see now I've now been taken down to 215 FRQs. I could technically add a all like a whole bunch of these at one time. Uh, I could uh, I could say I want uh, things with applied visuals, and it will even further narrow it down. As long as this number is not uh, super large, I'll have this option to add all of these questions to a quiz. And what that will do is. Uh, that will bring all of them all over to the right, so I don't have to click Add on every single one. Um, I definitely don't want to do that right now, so I'm going to hit Undo, uh, but it is something that I can do. If this number is uh, usually below 100, I should be able to do that. Um, uh, but again, I'm not seeing many of the, the, the practice icons. Here's one. Uh, if I keep kind of scrolling, I may see another. Um, I may have to go to the next page to see more. Um, and there, there's another one right here. There's another one right here. But if I wanted to see all of them at the same time, let me do a little bit more exploring, right? So if I go to Assign, um, I am going to see uh, all of my practice exams here. So you can see that my... Uh, the 2020 practice exams, the multiple choice are still showing up as secure items, uh, meaning in order for me to assign MCQ, you may still want to do that even though the 2020 exams uh, will not have MCQ, uh, but you may want to provide students with practice for content knowledge and skill practice. That's totally fine, but this will require the use of a lockdown browser and students will be, have to be able to install that on their computers in order to be able to take these uh, questions. But you can see that the FRQs now, that icon, has gone away, meaning that students can take the FRQs if you assign them to them, because notice this does not have a practice 
uh, symbol next to it, no green target next to it. Uh, these you would have to assign to students, but they can take them online at home uh, without the use of a secure lockdown browser. Um, then I'm just going to see all of the assessments that I have assigned before. Um, so I'm still not seeing any of the practice items, but um, I'm going to go over to progress and see what I see there. Oh, and now here things start to look a little different. So um, you can see these are things that I have assigned to students uh, that are, were either in progress or completed in some way. Um, but now you're going to see this tab that says optional student practice. And if I click here, these are all of the questions that have been unlocked for students for them to take on their own. This means you do not have to assign these to them. They will be able to uh, look at these questions and practice with them on their own. So let's say um, I'm going to go to the very bottom. Uh, let's say I'm going to look at this uh, Unit 5 FRQ uh, conceptual analysis. I just want to kind of point out there's not this necessarily this many questions. You'll notice like uh, Unit 5 FRQ conceptual analysis comes up three times for me, um, and that's because I have three different periods here. So uh, this will give me progress. Um, and, and I'll be able to see if students are actually doing them um, based on the period that they are in. Um, so if you only have one section of AP Biology, AP U.S. History, whatever course you teach, you'll only see this once. So uh, this list looks a little longer than uh, what is actual reality. So you will see that the, the question listed as many times as you have sections. Um, but if I want to click here and I want to see, um, uh, again, uh, I can see whether or not my students have started. Um, I can see whether or not uh, uh, they are, uh, I've scored something here. Uh, I can also kind of click on the question and actually see what the question is. Um, and so this is like anything I would have normally had access to in uh, the uh, question bank, you can see that these have been particularly formatted so that students can type their answers in. Um, if you teach a course where students are more likely to handwrite their answers, I'm thinking maybe a chemistry course, a physics course, a calculus course, um, this text box might be a file upload box, in which case students would take pictures of their solution and then upload that solution to the system. It might be good practice for them, especially if they are thinking about using that method uh, for submitting their responses for the 2020 exam. AP Classroom will give them some practice doing that. Um, I want to stress here that, that AP Classroom is not the platform that students will be using to test in, but some of the features may be similar, and so uh, it might be helpful for students to get used to, like typing their answers in here, uh, if it's a course where they can type answers, um, or uh, you know, taking a picture of something and uploading it if that's what they choose to do. Um, again, if you click the button on the side here, you will be able to see all of what we call the metadata for this item. I know what practices or skills uh, it aligns to. I can see what uh, big ideas and learning objectives it aligns to. Um, and uh, you can see at the very, very bottom, there are scoring guidelines. So uh, if I wanted to know what uh, students had to write in Part C in order to be able to earn full credit. I would go over to Part C and I could, I could toggle back and forth between zero points and one point and read uh, the, the correct answer or what students should have put as a correct response. So you can see this. Um, students will be able to see their own version of that. Uh, if you want to see it all at one time and you have access to a printer, you can uh, click on this scoring guide button. Uh, it will generate a PDF at the bottom of the page. And if I open that, um, you will uh, see the, 
we're doing this we're doing this live recording, so here we go. Uh, you will see all of the uh, correct answers and what students needed to have put there. So you can see it all at once instead of clicking through uh, options at the bottom. So I just kind of wanted to point that out as well. Um, and again, if I click out of this and I go over to results, um, I will be able to see some results uh, you know, for student practice, um, if students are kind of going through to see, or maybe they're practicing scoring their item, or if you have, uh, um, if you have additional um, uh, feedback that you want to give students, you can do that. So if I go back to the progress screen and I go to the optional student practice, you can see what students may have submitted. Uh, if I again go, if I go to that uh, Unit 5 FRQ question, uh, when uh, students have submitted something, you will be able to submit individual feedback for them. Um, none of my students, which are all fictional students, um, have submitted anything just yet. So um, I, I, I can't click anything for them here. Uh, if you do look at an earlier version of this, uh, you will see some information about how to score if uh, you are assigning other FRQs to your students. Uh, that are not designated as student practice, uh, and we'd encourage you to watch that in order to uh, get more information on how to score. Um, I'm going to stop here for a second because um, I am going to look at uh, my list of students. My list of fictional students um, are uh, all have last names that uh, are of the tree family. I'm going to focus here on Alan Ficus, um, and I want to see if I can take a, just a few minutes to uh, log into AP Classroom as a student so you can see what students will see. Um, so I'm going to uh, log out of my account here and um, let's see. It's going to take me back to my home page. Um, I am going to put in uh, Alan Ficus's uh, ID here, and again, I just want to point out that Alan Ficus is a uh, uh, a fictional student. So I'm gonna he has he has fictional login information here, uh, and we're gonna log in as Alan. And you can see now um, I am logged in as Alan. It says, welcome, Alan. Uh, it tells me up here. You can see the students, my AP experience is a little bit different um, than, uh, uh, than yours as a teacher. Uh, so it will tell you a couple of uh, different things that are going on. If you have uh, things that have been assigned, uh, if things are due at a certain date, um, I'm going to switch over to uh, AP Calculus, and we'll see what's here. And I want to call your attention right away to the top version of this. And uh, unlike yours, where the teacher has like this class progress snapshot at the top, um, students have like a list of task cards that are here. Uh, one of the things that's really awesome is that you will see uh, that Certain things uh, I have assigned. You can see this was take topic questions quiz 3.4. This was something I had assigned to my class. Uh, there were certain uh, parts of uh, former practice exams that were released to students. So they do have the option of taking um, an MCQ uh, um, practice here. Uh, they, also are advertised to, uh, it's advertised to them to, to uh, join our YouTube live streams. You can see that it actually even tells them the time that uh, this particular course meets, 2 to 2.45, Monday through Friday. Uh, make a great plug here. These teachers for AP Calculus are really awesome. Um, so if you do teach calculus, we encourage your students to, to watch this. Um, but all of our teachers are awesome, so please tune in no matter what. Uh, what subject you may teach and what uh, what your students uh, uh, where where they may be in the course curriculum. I promise they'll get something out of it. Uh, if they click here, they'll be taken to uh, the uh, the playlist, and they can watch whatever makes most sense to them, or they can start from the beginning and go all the way through. 
Um, and then you can see here, practice answering three response questions. So this is that optional practice. And as I go here, you will see all of the optional practice that has been released to them. And so for calculus, um, there's quite a bit here. Um, but you can see um, some of this may not be uh, a may not be appropriate to all students. So this is for Calculus AB. This is a Unit 10 FRQ. Looks like um, our calculus students got both AB and BC items here. So you may want to tell your students in AB, hey, you don't have to necessarily know what's in Unit 10. Um, but maybe I want to look at this one. That's the Unit 1, 4, 5, and 6 FRQ. Um, I click here. And uh, you'll see right away um, I can upload my file because, again, calculus is one of those courses where I'm probably not going to be able to type very much of anything. Um, so uh, it will give me the chance to do this on paper and then upload. And then what I can do is I can submit. And it will tell me, um, are you sure you want to uh, uh, submit? You haven't answered this question. I'm going to say yes. Uh, which before you submit, would you like to review how this question might be scored on an AP exam? You can review and optionally revise your response. And I say, yes, I want to review. And what it will do is it will actually walk me through the rubric and tell me one point is earned for this, one point is earned for that. And so I, as the student, then can revise my response before I submit. Again, this was made for practice. And I want to kind of stress that this was not made for um, teachers to be able to kind of grade, um, to, to put in a grade book or anything like this. It's really to give students self-guided opportunities to practice and get feedback uh, without interaction uh, from anyone else in the event that they're working from a situation where they have limited contact with you as their teacher. Um, so uh, this is an opportunity for them to get real lifetime feedback by looking at a rubric and really being able to sit down and work a problem or write an essay uh, and then read uh, what a correct response would look like or a high scoring response would look like and make revisions based on that. Um, so we wanted to make this one short uh, so that you have the opportunity to just kind of explore for, your, uh, for yourself, but we hope that this was somewhat helpful, giving you an idea of what teachers see and what students would see for the optional student practice portion of uh, the questions that are now available in AP Classroom. Uh, we hope that this was helpful. Um, and uh, again, if you're having any kind of trouble with uh, AP Classroom, please know uh, that there uh, are options in the help menu for you to contact our tech team. Uh, if you are having some sort of tech issue, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out there, uh, and they can help troubleshoot anything with AP Classroom. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we hope that this was helpful. Thank you for everything you're doing to keep instruction alive uh, with your students and supporting them through uh, this tough time. We hope that this webinar helps support you. Thank you for everything you're doing. Um, and here's wishing you, your family, your loved ones, your students, all the best. Please stay healthy and safe. And good luck to your students on the 2020 AP exam. Thank you. Goodbye.